What's up everyone, TerraQuake here, and welcome back to our Pokemon Fire Red walkthrough. In the last part, we checked out the Pokemon Laboratory as well as the Pokemon Mansion, grabbed the secret key, which allows us to walk right on into the Cinnabar Island Gym. And I like how, you know, it doesn't prompt you to use the key or anything. Once you have it in your bag, you can sort of just head on inside. So yeah, that is very nice. And this gym is kind of like a questionnaire. So if you come over to these big machines right here, you can answer a question and if you get it right, the door will open up to the next room and you won't have to battle the trainer. So you can get through here without taking on any trainers. However, because I want to fight the trainers, I am uh, still going to talk to them afterwards just to battle them. But yeah, first answer is yes. Caterpie, of course, evolves into Metapod. That's like Pokemon 101. Also, I love how there's burglars in this gym. Not really sure if Blaine knows that, like, you know, his employees are burglars. That's pretty bad, Blaine. They should be in jail, but, uh, you do you, man. You do you. Now, of course, this is a fire-type gym, so get your water, rock, and ground types ready. They'll have a heyday in this place. And, yeah, just be prepared to fight some Growlithes, some Vulpix, Magmars. You'll see a bunch of them in here. Probably some Ponytas too. So yeah, kind of just a bit of everything. And I'm going to try to use Coco here in the, uh, at least the gym trainer battles. Just to, you know, keep him up to speed with the rest of the team. I know he's weak to fire, but we do have Psychics. So I'm hoping that is strong enough to one-shot most of these guys. And Hydra, he, he doesn't really have too many problems. And hey, look, we're seeing some fully evolved mons too, which is nice. So yeah, probably some Arcanine, Ninetales, Rapidash, all that good stuff. The OG Gen 1 fire types. Do not burn me. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> that happened in the last video too. That's kind of why I said that, because I just got done recording the Pokemon Mansion video. And in that video, we got burned right, right after I said, don't burn me. So I wanted to test it out again, and guess what? I got burned. Yo, we gotta do that every time now. We have to do that every time to see if it's really just a jinx. And this is so annoying too, because like, you gotta freaking heal up your mons, which I complained in the last episode, but I just don't really like the animation thing because it takes too much time. All right, let's get Hydra up to the front of the team. And hey, Cut, you have an item. It is a Durenberry. Don't even know what that does. All right, moving on along, you kind of just have this dude sitting over here. He's not even, you know, by a questionnaire machine, whatever you want to call him. But, hey, we'll fight him anyways. We will show him some love. And he's got a Vulpix. Just going to try attack like usual. But, yeah, after you defeat this gym, you're going to have an option. You can either take on kind of an optional side quest sort of thing on the Sevi Islands, or you can just head straight to the 8th gym. But because this is a walkthrough and I could probably use the levels if I'm going to be honest, I'm going to head towards the Sevi Islands after today's video. And yeah, we'll be able to check out one island, two island, and three island. And it may or may not be the spot where I'm getting my final team member, so I kind of have to go. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and knock out this Nine Tails, and that will be trainer number two down. But yeah, I feel like the Sevi Islands is kind of forgotten about sometimes. A lot of people just skip over the, the place, head straight to the 8th gym. And I've talked about it before, but it's where like the post-game of this game takes place. And honestly, the post-game is really cool in this game. Also, I love how we just burned a Ninetales because, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Anyways, Hydra got to level 45 and we defeated Super Nerd Eric with a K. Dude, he's just so cool. He spells Eric with a K. All right, Coco, get up here. I'm kind of curious to see how well you're going to do with Psychic. But first, we've got another question to take on. And this one is going to ask if there are nine League badges. Of course, that is no. There is and has always been eight. Maybe in, you know, Generation 10, we'll get nine gym badges. But for now, it's just eight. And we're going to fight another dude, Super Nerd Avery. Status update on Coco, he easily knocked out that dude's Growlithe, Vulpix, Charmander, and Ponyta with a single Psychic. So yeah, that was pretty easy. 
All right, it looks like this next question is going to be no, because Poliwag does not evolve three times. They try to trick you there with, a, like, Politoed, but do not get fooled, because, you know, you can't go from, like, a Poliwrath to a Politoed, or vice versa. You got to choose one path, meaning no matter what, Poliwag will only evolve twice. And I'm looking at my Bulbapedia guide, and I'm actually realizing that most of the questions in here are no. There's only two where you answer yes, so, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. If you're ever in doubt, just answer no, and you'll most likely get it correct, unless it's like the first or fifth question. Alright, so we defeated that guy really easily, and it is time for question number four. Let's get it. Okay, no, sorry, this is question number three. No, this is close. No, wait. Oh my gosh, there's six questions. I thought there was five in this place. I'm so dumb. Okay, that was like really confusing me. This is question number four. Alright, here we go. Let's get it. Are electric moves effective against ground types? Yes. Yeah, no, of course they are not. So, we can move on through, but first I'm going to take on another trainer in here. And yeah, I was looking at Bulbapedia here, and I thought there were only five questions in this place, but no, there is six. And oh my goodness, you have a Rapidash. Okay, this might be a little scary, but I believe in you. <laughs> you only went for Fury Attack. Come on. What are we doing, trainer AI? What are we doing? I am just going to give you a Psychic and knock you out Rapidash. Almost, almost knock you out. Okay, you know what? I can finish you off with Giga Drain because, you know, just to add a Salt in the Wound. Heck yeah, man. Going to knock you out with a not very effective move and heal up some HP in the process. Very neat, very cool. Down you go. Will we level up here? Rapidash does hand out a lot of experience. Not enough, though. It'll take one more trainer battle. But yeah, after we get Executor leveled up, I'm just going to sweep Blaine's team with Blastoise. So if you're expecting like an intense gym battle, then I apologize in advance. Okay, so right here is probably the toughest question. It's saying that Pokemon of the same kind and the level are not identical. You would think that like they are, but I guess, you know, they're referring to like Pokemon have different natures. They could also be different genders. So it is actually yes. And I have honestly gotten that one wrong before, so I wouldn't blame you if you get it wrong. But yeah, keep in mind, it is, yes, it can be a little confusing. And we are on the second to last trainer, Burglar Dusty. If there was ever a name for a burglar, I feel like it'd be Dusty. That's just kind of like a cool kid name, you know? Then again, I don't even know a single person in my life named Dusty or Dustin. So, I'm not sure. But hey, if your name's Dusty or Dustin, good on you. That's a freaking sick name. Alright, Coco, you're just gonna stay in, body all these fire types like a beast. Intimidate does not matter because we're going for Psychic. And then, as I said, I'm just gonna throw Blastoise up front and he is going to wash away the rest of this gym. So, yeah, that is gonna be very easy. And, of course, you got to Cinnabar Island by using Surf, so, you know, unless you were using an HM Pokemon for Surf... You probably have Surf on one of your actual team members, meaning, you know, it is going to work wonders in this place. Alright, the last question is probably the easiest in here because it's going to ask you if Team 28 contains Tombstoney. Obviously not. It contains Dig because we got that TM earlier on in the game. And now that I'm realizing it, for some reason they changed the name from Tombstoner in the Gen 1 games to Tombstoney here in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Not really sure why. But, uh, they did it, so, you know, we just gotta live with it, I guess. Alright, we will give your Pokemon just a couple of Surfs, and then we're moving on to the battle. And, man, I love Blaine. He's definitely one of my favorite gym leaders in the Kanto region, just because in Generation 1, he has the goofiest AI you will ever see. He'll be healing Mons when he's, uh, you know, already at full health. He'll be using just random moves, and yeah, I'm sure you guys have known that by now. Now, of course, this is Generation 3, so he doesn't have that bad AI anymore. But let's go ahead and talk to him and take him on. So yeah, he's going on and on about his fiery challengers, or sorry, fiery Pokemon, and he is going to remind us to have Burn Heal. I don't think we're going to need that in this fight. Anyways, he'll start with his level 42 Growlithe, which knows Bite, Roar, Takedown, and Fire Blast. Nothing really too strong besides Fire Blast. However, I mean, one Surf is going to do the trick. Come on, we saw this coming, man. We saw this one coming. 
<laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Blaine. I apologize in advance. Okay, he's going out to his level 40 Ponyta next. This thing knows a Stomp, a Bounce, Fire Spin, and Fire Blast. So an all-attacking move set. Bounce is a Flying-type move, so keep that in mind. It does have a decent bit of type coverage, but really not that great of defenses. And he'll go to his Rapidash, which is at level 42 and has the same exact moveset as Ponyta. So, yeah, I'm just going to surf away. And we will do it one more time for the Ace of Blaine's team which is Arcanine, all the way at level 47, so I'm pretty sure this is the highest one we faced so far. And unfortunately, similar to Growlithe, it just doesn't have many good moves. Bite, Roar, Takedown, and Fire Blast. And we even outsped that thing too, that was kind of surprising. Will we one-shot? Oh yeah, I, I, I figured he would live. Arcanine is definitely a solid all-around Pokemon, and yeah, look how po uh, powerful Fire Blast is. I know that was a crit, but still, that's over half. He'll go for a Hyper Potion, but my boy Blaine, you cannot delay the inevitable, my dude. You just can't. It's gonna happen eventually. Maybe we'll just crit right here. <laughs> what? Yo, wait, yo. People are gonna start getting skeptical of me because I'm just, like, calling things left and right. <laughs> no shot. Alright, what a gym battle, man. What a gym battle. We get to level 46, Blaine goes down. Meaning we get the uh, Volcano Badge. So yeah, this is the seventh gym badge in the Kanto League. He also gives us TM38 Fire Blast, a very powerful fire type move. Also has the chance to burn the opponent. I love how he says don't waste it on water Pokemon. I don't even know if there's any water Pokemon that can learn it. But I will take your advice and probably, I don't know, give it to someone else. Anyways, that will wrap up part number, what is this, 35... I hope I'm right. Anyways, next time we are checking out the Sevi Islands. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great rest of your day. And until then, deuces.